Hear that ocean? Too bad I had to create something online because it's dark already and I wanted to do this video by the ocean, but oh well. Here's my mimosa. I'm here on the island of Texas. Maybe it's too loud. I'm so sorry. Anyway. Well, I'm here to talk about arousal. Right? Penis people. <laughs> what happens? Hmm if you get aroused during a session, right? And you have an erection. All right, so this topic, this question is usually brought up a lot in my screenings and in the text messages and emails that I receive, right? What happens? And there's a lot of anxiety around it. There's some embarrassment, fear, shame around this bodily response. And how I'd like to see it is when you experience touch with another person, right, that rhythm, that energy that's flowing through the body, it's completely natural that as the energy is moving through the body, that blood flows too, and blood sometimes goes everywhere, of course, and things happen. And so first I want to acknowledge that it's healthy and it's normal to have a arousing, an, an, an erection during cuddling. Like, that's normal, and it happens often. So then, what do we need to know, right? What are some, I've had three things to begin with that are really important to know about this experience. And one, we need to normalize erections in non-sexual places, right? So erections happen for a whole bunch of different reasons. We don't get to decide sometimes that we, I guess I don't have a penis, but you know, penis owners don't get to decide like when and how it happens. It just happens, it's normal, it's natural. And, and so first acknowledging that that does happen and also, yes, it happens in the cuddling session as well. So number two, um, it's a privilege. I think that people that get erections, they should, I think they should, but you know, it, it'd be nice if it was celebrated, like it's a good thing, it's a healthy response, because not all penis uh, owners have them. And I do have clients that don't get erections, and it's a really difficult thing for them to experience. So. And I also want to say a little bit about that. Those who don't get erections as often or it's more difficult, I think they have a an, an really unique opportunity to learn how to connect with other people in new ways because they don't get to depend on their penis to make things happen for them. And they have an easier, I think, transition to cuddling because they've learned how to use the rest of their body, their senses, their touch to be able to have that experience with another person. And number three, we're conditioned. So every time you receive touch in your adult life, if you kind of anticipated sex was going to come, then yeah, you would get an erection. So over the years, if you've been doing that for 5, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, every time you're touched, you're, you know sex is coming, then you've conditioned your body to expect it, to hope that it, here it is, it's coming, right? Sex is coming, intercourse or whatever it is that you're hoping for. So you've built in, you've trained your body to have this response. And if you're hoping to come into a cuddling session and not have that response, well, I, I fear that that's going to be really difficult. And I understand that. I understand that, you know, if you condition your body and train your body to have a, an erection um, during touch, then it's going to take some time to kind of break that down and to retrain your body to have a new response. And then some people will say, well, I have to, I have to have an, you know, that's, that's, I can't help it. And I, and then this is probably not the, the perfect response to this, but I do say, well, you do know how to receive touch without getting an erection. And they're like, no, no, I can't. And I'm like, yes, you can. Because if your mother or sister or some family member were to touch you, you want to get an erection. And they're like, oh no, of course. Well, so yes, it's possible. It's just again in the context, of course. And I know that, but so there's a, there's a possibility to learn to receive touch with, uh, without that arousal. So I've had another question that's been asked, are there cuddle positions that are sexual? And I say no. There's no cuddle position I would say is explicitly sexual that is completely, you know, off the books. It's all about intention. So in a position, let's say even, let's say lying down, lying on my back, both of us on our backs looking face up, that might be sexual to someone, and that's just because their intention is sexual, right? It's what's going on here and in here. And so, um, let's say if someone's right on top of me, the full body, head to toe, we're touching, and and they're you know they're really connecting with what's going on inside and connecting with their feelings, and 
getting that deeper relaxation, that might not be sexual. But someone else, of course, you know, every time they're on top of another person, they have a sexual response, well then yeah, that's gonna probably be a sexual experience for them. So there's no sexual position that's sexual, it's just again, what's going on here and here that makes the biggest difference. And of course, this is a clothed experience, just to remind everyone out there that it's really important that you know that, yes, tops and bottoms are on at all times, and I've learned a lot of different ways how that's really important. Um, so I stick to that. I, I find that that is the best way to ensure that this remains in the non-sexual realm. So what do we do, right? As someone else, as one of my clients put it, what if, what if I'm poked? Oh my gosh. Right, so what happens if I'm poked? <laughs> All right, so first, I'm okay with it, right? We're okay. I normalize, I say that's, it happens, it's not a big deal, just because, again, we've been, sh there's been a lot of shame, we've been shamed in thinking that erection is wrong. I am the first person who wants to say it's not wrong, you're not doing anything wrong, this is normal. Number two, what do I do that happens? I look at the rest of the body. I, you know, I get to, listening to them, I listen to their bodies, I listen to how they're breathing, I watch their hands, if their hands get grabby, if their body gyrations change, if anything else happens with that erection, then I, then I, you know, it's my time to intervene and, and ask some questions. But if it's just an erection and everything stays the same, I leave it alone. I don't bother with it, I ignore it. But again, I'm looking for hand grabby, breath changing, body, all of that. If that shifts, then that's when I, I'll say something. And what does that look like? Um, I might say something like, you know, how is it that we can get into a deeper relaxation? Because here's the situation, this is how I see it. If we are, um, if I see some arousal happening and some like, and that we encourage that, if we move in that direction, what ends up happening is, that's gonna grow and grow and grow, right? It's like we're feeding a, a monster, like we're feeding, and it's a good thing, it's a great monster, it's a happy monster, but we're feeding it, and by the end of our session, there is no release, <laughs> to be no release. And people have said, you know, when I did this from the beginning, like my first session actually, that happened, there was arousal, and I was still learning how to manage that, and yeah, the person left with that, that heightened sense, right? And and even though his, his feedback was, I had a great time, I loved it, it was, there was tension. And that was exactly what I didn't want. I didn't want him to have tension. I wanted him to go and leave relaxed. And so I learned through that experience that if building that arousal, like that actually creates a situation at the end that is really counterintuitive to what I'm trying to do. So that happened, that moment if that happens, that I notice it's, you know, that's kicked in, that, that natural reaction or response, then I will, I will invite them to, you know, can we think of a way that you can get into deeper relaxation? Because I want you to leave here with that connectedness, that intimacy, and that, and that uh, relaxation. I don't want you to leave with tension. So that's, that's the difference. That's, it, just in a practical way, that's how I want people to leave, feeling really good in their bodies, not like, uh, you know, all heated up and, and needing something else right after a session. So, you know, I'll invite them in that way. If they can think of ways that they can do that, we can do a, a position change. Um, sometimes it's, you know, if we're not talking, and maybe we to start talking, we talk about something about life, something that, of course, is non-sexual. And with some people, if I can about conversation, some people can talk about some sexual things during a cuddling session. It's really iffy, and a lot of people can't. So because of my other work and other things that I do, I have to kind of watch and be careful. If people want to talk about sexual material content, then I need to just see how capable they are to keep that separate or they can talk about it, but their body isn't reacting. So I'm watching, and it's all about me watching and listening and figuring it out. Um, and just acknowledging, this is a learning curve. Again, I don't expect anyone to come into a cuddling session for the first time having mastered this, having, you know, knows that they will know exactly how they're gonna respond. I don't expect it in any way. This is a new way of relating, connecting, touching. I give everyone a break um, to be able to learn this little by little. So just know I'll be really patient with you and, and we can, again, it's a relationship we're building so we can learn how to do this, map this out together. Now, here's a pro tip from one of my clients. He is um, someone who knows that he's a pre-comer, like a lot of pre-com, and he knows he's probably gonna get some sense of arousal, some um, erection, and he'd be really embarrassed, right, if there were like pre-com in his shorts like that. 
um, then you know you just these are things you can do like underwear I mean you can kind of figure it out but at, you know for him he requested if it was okay and um, and you don't need to actually ask me this this isn't something that I need to know but he's you know he said is it okay if I wear a condom now again a condom for the sake of keeping some of the pre-cum within the condom and not having it like get wet and, and all that kind of stuff and that was perfect like that was a really great way for him to take care of himself him knowing himself not shaming his body and again honoring it and knowing this is some way that I can take care of myself and not then yeah and know that this is this is normal so there's a little pro tip for you from one of my clients lastly cuddling isn't for everyone if you're listening to this and you're thinking I just can't do it like I I really want sex or I really want to experience um, arousal and you know that's great <laughs> like it, the cuddling might not be for you and that's okay there are other services out here in the community like that are non-sexual and sexual so you know you can get a therapeutic massage and you can go and get an erotic massage which then adds that um, sexual component to it you can get um, escort work I mean I am supportive of sex work so if that's something that you would like to pursue you like to look into I invite you go that direction because there are people out there that want to service you and I am looking for that client who's my sweet spot client who is the one that's you know really understands what calling is about really need that need that touch and yeah that's that's the part that they've been missing in their life they can get sex sex is for some people it's really easy to get they can get they can you know they masturbate they take care of themselves but it's hard to cuddle yourself right so that's why they come to me and if you end up going to those other services again which I I do support um, and you say I want to match up cuddling with those other services please that's great too there's no reason just to have a one type of touch service that you that you seek out so go to your massage one week and then come to me the next week or go to your erotic massage um, or your escort person and then come and see me like we can I think it's great that we all work together and provide the best experience life experience for you so how do you know if cuddling is right for you right um, some of you realize that you've never had an experience of touch without arousal and you'd like to learn something new about yourself this is what this is for I'm here to provide that for you to learn more about yourself to be able to experience arousal in that way um, and some of you are really tired and exhausted with the pressure and expectations and the performance that sex requires. It's a lot. I mean, I'm a sexual being and I have my partner and I know how much it involves, right, to be able to be healthy sexually and to express my sexuality and sex in that way. And there's a lot on the line there. And um, look, I love that cuddling you don't re doesn't require any of that kind of pressure and expectations. So cuddling, you just come as you are, and you can't do it wrong. I mean, if, again, keeping within the code of conduct, you can't really do cuddling wrong. It allows you to be in the space at that time, not thinking about the future or the past, but just being present with another human being and connecting with them. And uh, yeah, it's just amazing. It's an amazing experience. I, I hope that everyone has someone that they can cuddle with or receive touch from. And if you don't have someone, please come see me. I'm in San Antonio, Texas, so I'd love to see you. All right, I think I'm done. And I'll have to finish my mimosa now. And maybe go to the hot tub in a little bit too. All right, talk to you later. Love y'all.